Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Today is January the 9th, 2020. Let's talk boxing, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Well, according to reports, Terrence Crawford reached out directly to Errol Spence and the two men understanding that they are the principals, that the people around them, the manager, the promoters work for them, right? The two men have apparently agreed to fight each other. Before I talk about who wins this fight, let me just say, I consider both guys to be winners for this. Understand whatever happens, the boxing public now understands that these guys are this driven to be the best, right? It's best versus the best. You know the attitude. The title is not worth it unless it's earned, right? These guys have no excuses. There's no hiding behind managers and promoters and other middlemen in a fight that will make both of them a lot of money. Now understand, that seems self-evident, but we've had problems at heavyweight with exactly this issue, right? At Welter, let me just say the fighters are clearly adults. Let me also say before I go further that I hope these guys enjoy the moment. Right, understand, we're talking about the welterweight division, not the heavyweight division, where fighters age a little bit more slowly. At welter, people come and go, right? When you're in your 30s, you're at the older end of the spectrum. So, something's going on at, at welter, right? Because too many guys are in their 30s. Terrence Crawford's in his 30s. Sean Porter, who just gave Errol Spence such a big challenge that many subscribers here on this website believe that Sean Porter beat Errol Spence. Right? We can debate that. I thought Spence edged him, but understand it was that kind of fight where it was back and forth. Right? Sean Porter's in his 30s. Manny Pacquiao's in his 40s. Keith Thurman and Danny Garcia are in their 30s. Understand the next generation is already in the building. The person I want to see sitting courtside or ringside at this fight should be Virgil Ortiz. Let me just say, the best punch I saw in 2019 was not Wilder's KO of Dominique Brazil, that right hand. No, the best punch I saw was a left jab thrown by Virgil Ortiz that dropped Brad Solomon, a fighter who I thought in his prime had a shot on Floyd Mayweather for the first time in Brad Solomon's career. Right? Ortiz, this calendar year, is going to be ready by the end of the year to be competitive against whoever wins this fight. That's if Errol Spence, who's in his late 20s, decides to stay at welterweight if he's the winner. Right? So, let's talk about this fight. I like Terrence Crawford in this fight. Let me just say that while Crawford is on the short list of the best in the sport, pound for pound, right? Both of these guys are, quite frankly. But Crawford might actually be underrated. Let's just look back at his history. You take it for granted. Understand, it took Crawford less time against a closer to his prime, Yorkies Gamboa, to take care of Gamboa in a fight where Crawford looked overwhelmed by the speed differential early in the fight. 
then made adjustments. Crawford disposed of Yorkie's Gamboa, a Gamboa who didn't have a problem with his Achilles, who didn't feel that his Achilles was torn from the early part of the fight, right, the first three rounds. It took Crawford less time than it recently took Gervonta Davis, who might be well-connected, but might also be overrated. Right, Crawford, dealing with a more prime Gamboa, handled him, made the adjustments, got hurt in the fight. I don't care what anyone says. He, he got hurt in the fight, according to my own two eyes, then was able to come back, make the adjustments, and neutralize Gamboa. Right? Look at Crawford against Amir Khan, another guy much faster than Crawford. You're going to notice that Crawford's just a master at spacing. Understand, spacing and timing don't show up in a CompuBox numerical sheet. They just don't. Now, the storm clouds are out on both fighters here. Let's talk about that. Right? Crawford, again, I don't care what anybody else says. Right? Crawford, in my opinion, got knocked down in his last fight. Right? The other guy is throwing the same kind of hooks that Errol Spence, when he decides to come inside, throws. Right? Crawford gets banged up. Crawford hits the canvas. I'm sure Crawford's visit to the canvas played a role in Errol Spence's eagerness to fight him at this time, right? But Crawford, as is his pattern, gets off the canvas and then started to dominate that fight. Takes over the fight on a guy who was a mid-range hooker, right? The thing with Crawford is Crawford can handle different styles. Crawford also is not going to be caught at the end of a jab like Mikey Garcia was. Because Crawford is just better in terms of foot movement, spacing. Crawford also is ambidextrous. Spence is a southpaw. If Spence starts sticking that jab in his face, Crawford can then decide whether to go lefty or righty, I get the feeling Crawford in real life is a natural lefty, but I could be wrong. But understand, Crawford is adept at both lefty and righty. He's a switch hitter. Errol Spence isn't. And so you have a situation here where we've seen two Errol Spences, right? The Errol Spence, who we know is a short range hooker. The guy who destroyed Chris Algieri. I believe Crawford can handle that style. You also have the Errol Spence who was on his back foot operating behind a jab against Mikey Garcia. Keep in mind, Mikey didn't have experience at 147 pounds. Certainly not ample experience for that fight. Right? I'm just telling you flatly here, you cannot keep Terrence Crawford at the end of a jab, right? That, you know, throw out the Spence on his back foot idea. That's just not gonna happen, right? So I'm wondering exactly what Spence can do here against Crawford. I believe Spence's best bet is to go for the stoppage. Let's talk about the red flags with Spence. They're even more substantial than Crawford hitting the canvas in his last fight and having to make adjustments. Right, first there's the Sean Porter fight. Now understand, that's a disturbing fight. I'm among those who believe Spence won the fight. But Spence gets hit with a lot of shots. Porter at times does not concede the pocket, right? There's too much action in that fight for gamblers. In other words, don't get me wrong, as a boxing match, it's a classic. That's a great fight. 
But if you're betting on a fighter, you want to see somebody control the pace of the fight a little bit better than Errol Spence controlled the pace of the Porter fight. Right? You knew Sean Porter was going to come inside, be episodic, want to mix it up. You knew that. Right? Porter's a shorter guy. He wasn't going to try to keep Errol Spence at the end of a jab. You knew Porter was going to come in and have a firefight at times in that fight. And Errol Spence just wasn't able to do much. In other words, I thought Errol Spence, you know, won the fight, is more accurate through the shorter punches than Sean Porter. Right? But I haven't seen Terrence Crawford in a fight where he had no control over the pacing of the fight and was in a firefight for 12 rounds like Errol Spence was against Sean Porter. So I believe the red flags are out already just on the competitiveness of that Sean Porter fight. Right? Errol Spence just couldn't slow down Sean Porter. He couldn't slow down the pacing of the fight. Well, you have even more red flags with the idea that Errol Spence had a car accident. Where, okay, I'm hearing that he came out of the car accident okay, right? Well, I saw photos of the car involved in a car accident. Right, just looking at the car, the car wasn't in good shape. Right, let's just be real here. Now, I get it. Guys want to tell you that they're gladiators and stuff like that. I've been in a car accident before. It was right by a town I liked going to, Long Beach, California, years ago. Right, I used to go to Long Beach, I used to hang out. Then I got in a car accident on the freeway by Long Beach, right? I didn't want to go to Long Beach anymore. No knock on the town, great town. Just bad memories. I'd be on the highway by Long Beach. I'd be like, <laughs> you know, now I know people are going to say, oh, Dwyer, come on. This guy's a competitor and stuff like that. I know all these fighters want to convince you that they're bulletproof and stuff like that. Right? I can hardly imagine a less bulletproof group. Right? Errol Spence, first of all, can look at fighters older than him. I'm sure Errol Spence is a fan of the sport. I'm sure he has looked at films and he's seen guys who, you know, had great fights, who were big time warriors back in the day. And I'm sure Errol Spence is aware that some of these guys have slurred speech. It's very hard to understand what some of these older gladiators are saying. Among the guys with the King's speech, I'm sure Errol Spence is looking at guys and he's seen, you know, the bent noses and stuff like that. The toll that this sport can take on a fighter. That even great champions ultimately turn out to be mortal, right? Now you're telling me in this sport where there's violence, where careers can get derailed on one punch, where Spence himself has just been in a firefight, you're telling me a guy can have a car accident, go through a training camp, and suddenly is emotionally ready. Emotionally ready to fight one of the best in the sport pound for pound. Folks, I'm not buying it. If I heard that Pat Mahomes got in a car crash, then I looked at photos of Mahomes' car and I saw the car looking like Spence's car looked. Right? I can tell you I'm not taking the Chiefs in the Super Bowl. <laughs> I, just, I just don't believe guys leave that in a collision sport and then are able to put it behind them and haven't been, you know, thinking of their own mortality and stuff like that. So I personally feel that this fight against this level of opponent, 
right? And let's not kid ourselves about Crawford. When Crawford wants to sit down on punches, he can drop you. Didn't he drop, well, he dropped the guy who just dropped him, right? Didn't he drop Victor Postal, a pretty slick customer, right? Before that, Postal was known for a great chin and stuff like that. That chin didn't hold up that well against Terrence Crawford, right? Crawford is a guy who knows how to use leverage and stuff like that. As it is, I think Crawford deals with more styles than... Errol Spence. That's as it is without the car crash. I view Crawford like I view the New England Patriots. Crawford's a different guy. Depending on who his opponent is. Right? You watch Crawford fights and you can tell, oh, Crawford is prepared to fight Amir Khan. Right? You sense it. Oh, Crawford is prepared to fight Benavides. Right? Crawford is a technician. He's a guy changing his style, adapting his style. He has a game plan. You mean to tell me that Errol Spence, after a tough fight against Sean Porter, months after a big car crash where the car is banged up, Errol Spence himself, their photos of Errol Spence looking banged up, you mean to tell me he's going to hop in the ring against a guy who's not going to be phased by his southpaw stance because Crawford's a switch hitter, right? He's going to face a guy who many people feel is the best in the division already. I'm expecting Errol Spence to fight this fight differently than he fought the Mikey Garcia fight. I'm expecting him to come inside like he did against Sean Porter. And then he's going to find out that he's not fighting a predictable fighter like Sean Porter. Right? He's not fighting an episodic guy who's going to try to come in low and throw a bunch of punches and stuff like that. He's going to find that it's hard to figure out what Terrence Crawford is doing. Let me also say, too, that Crawford, like Mayweather, is actually better as the fight progresses. In other words, the Crawford you see in the first three rounds is not the Crawford you're dealing with in rounds seven, eight, and nine, right? The Benavides fight comes to mind where Crawford takes over that fight toward the end of it. I don't think Errol Spence, and Spence to me is one of the best. He certainly proved me wrong on the Mikey Garcia fight. But I just don't think Errol Spence is that complicated. I think he's a short-range hooker. A guy like Crawford might be able to take away the hooks simply by positioning. Right? Crawford has been calling out Spence for a long period of time. I get the feeling Crawford already knows what game plan he has in mind. The bet I'm recommending here, and I have not seen the line. I've looked for it. The fighters have announced that they're interested in fighting each other. The betting market hasn't yet developed. But if permitted, the bet I like is Terrence Crawford to win this fight. I hope Crawford's not a big favorite, right? Because I'm looking for value. It's Terrence Crawford to win this fight hedged with Spence by KO. Why? Because I have seen Crawford hit hard in fights. I thought Crawford was hit hard in his last fight. Crawford was dropped in his last fight. They're calling it a slip. Errol Spence is a finisher. Sean Porter is one of the best at 147. Porter is very hard to knock out. Right? Very hard to knock out. Um, I don't think you can judge Errol Spence by Porter's chin, right? Errol Spence is a finisher. I believe he understands that he's not going to outbox Terrence Crawford. I'm sorry, I just don't see that happening. So I believe Spence is going to try to impose himself on Crawford. I think Spence's best chance of winning the fight is by stoppage. So, on January the 9th, 2020... My early take on this fight is Terrence Crawford to win the fight. 
hedged with Errol Spence by stoppage. Let me just add this. I think Crawford has a problem with speed. Right? His opponent's speed. So I believe Manny Pacquiao would give Crawford problems. Right? I think Pacquiao is so fast that a technician like Crawford would need time to adjust. Right? I do believe Manny Pacquiao has a shot on Crawford. The problem with Pacquiao, though, is that Crawford has film of four fights by a technician like Crawford, Juan Manuel Marquez, against Manny Pacquiao, right? And the first fight, Marquez hits the canvas several times early, gets up off the canvas, makes adjustments, and then takes over that fight. Terrence Crawford is a guy who's so well prepared that I'm guessing he has studied already the Marquez films and knows what kind of strategy he's going to try to use against Manny Pacquiao, right? Let me also say this too. Manny these days seems to be a smarter fighter, right? Because let's remember, Manny had other heartache, the Timothy Bradley series of fights, and Manny made the adjustments I know there's a lot of controversy over who won the first fight and stuff like that. Let's just say the Pacquiao who's there for the third fight had changed some of his tactics. He wasn't standing there getting hit by Bradley's jab the way he was in the first fight, right? So keep an eye on Welter. Let me just close by saying Victor, excuse me, Virgil Ortiz is a name you need to look at, right? He's green. He's green. But understand, this is a guy who, if he can figure out how to throw that power jab with regularity and accuracy, the way he can hit, punchers are born, they're not made. And the way he shifts his body from side to side between punches, right? This is a young guy with a very high boxing IQ, right? I would just say his time is closer than people realize. I think his name has to be included in any round robin talk of who gets the ultimate ring at 147. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.